tested. This is the test piece. It has a cylindrical test region with an original diameter of 10 mm and an original gauge length of 100 mm. Within this test region, distance marks have been drawn at regular intervals. They help to visualise and measure the plastic behaviour of the specimen. Using a hand control, the tester moves the upper cross head into its correct starting position. Now he can place the threaded ends of the test piece in the lower and upper grips of the testing machine. In the next step, he swings the extensometer into its working position and checks that everything is correctly prepared. Then he selects all necessary testing parameters on the control computer. Ready. The test starts and the extensometer's sensor arms are carefully pressed onto the test piece. This way, the gauge length can be measured throughout the whole tensile test. The gauge length is displayed at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. At the beginning, it amounts to 100 mm. During the tensile test, the test piece is slowly and constantly elongated with a standardised speed. The force that the test piece opposes to the imposed elongation is recorded and can be seen at the bottom left-hand corner of the computer display. The material behaviour can best be observed in a force elongation diagram. The force F is being plotted upwards on the vertical axis, the elongation delta L towards the right on the horizontal axis. At first, the force rises rapidly. Force and elongation are proportional and form a steep, straight line in the diagram. In this area, the material behaves elastically. If the test piece were to be unloaded from this area, it would spring back completely to its original length. In materials with yield point phenomenon, the end of the elastic area can be seen clearly. The plastic deformation starts abruptly and is accompanied by a sudden drop of force. If the test piece were to be unloaded now, it would not spring back to the original length, but instead show a permanent elongation. In the next stage of the tensile test, an almost constant force level with slight fluctuations occurs. This phenomenon is called the Luders effect. After a certain strain, known as the Luder strain, the force increases again. The material opposes an increasing force against the imposed elongation. Its strain hardens. Up to the point of maximum force, the test piece is strained uniformly along its length. This means that the test piece gets longer and thinner but keeps a cylindrical shape. As soon as the maximum force is reached, a neck begins to form at one point of the test piece. All further plastic deformation now only takes place at the neck and eventually the test piece fractures there. In the recorded force elongation diagram, the force FEH at the upper yield point can clearly be seen. This is the highest force the test piece can sustain elastically. FEL is defined as the force at the lower yield point, Fmax as the maximum force. Using these forces, the strength properties of materials can be calculated. The upper yield strength REH is calculated by dividing the force FEH by the original cross-sectional area S0. The lower yield strength REL is defined in a similar way. The maximum force divided by the original cross-sectional area is called tensile strength RM. In the last step, the tester swings the extensometer back into its resting position and removes the broken test piece. On the work table, he puts the fragments back together again.
With the help of the distance marks, the percentage elongation after fracture can be determined. This is the permanent strain after fracture and amounts to about 30% in this example. Please note that the percentage elongation after fracture depends on the length to diameter ratio. By measuring the smallest diameter at the point of fracture, the percentage reduction of area can be calculated. It describes the reduction of cross-sectional area at the point of fracture in relation to the original cross-sectional area.